Hi there, Heather from Find Your Balance Health Coaching. I'm here today with Elizabeth Potts. She is a licensed massage therapist and a chiropractic therapy assistant in Franklin, Tennessee. And I'm also here with Zena, because she's being a little difficult, should we say? <laughs> So um, Elizabeth and I met about four years ago. She has been my swim coach. And uh, so yeah, we have, our lives have definitely gone in various paths in the last four <laughs> years. Um, but she is super passionate about what she does. She, her, she specializes in lymphatic, craniosacral, and myofascial massage. So welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for being here today. Thank you for having me. This is fun. So let's, can you just describe each of the modalities that that you do absolutely so I am a little bit more clinically trained um, so when someone comes to me in a session I don't think like smooth Swedish massage um, I'm definitely a little bit more on the clinical side like I said so with lymphatic work it's very 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 light um, the lymphatic system we'll get into it a little bit but it's basically there's pathways all throughout the entire body. And so if you press too hard, then you actually pinch off. Think of like little straws and you pinch off the straw. Yeah. So it's a very, very light modality um, that you kind of have to be very intentional of the person in front of you of falling, like where's their system potentially clogged? Where's their system potentially um, just a little sluggish? And so um, you're pumping the system. It doesn't have its own uh, pumping mechanism. And so there's only a couple ways to make it move. Um, and so with that, um, it's a very, very light technique that I work in certain patterns. Um, but then again, you always specialize, customize to the person on the table. So it's a really cool technique. It is huge for the immune system. Um, and we can go into some really cool details with the lymph system. Craniosacral work is working with the cerebral spinal fluid. Um, so I, my whole entire theory of my sessions is like, I'm supporting the body. I'm not really trying to push anything. Um, and so in supporting the cerebral spinal fluid, it kind of will move slowly. Um, it can get sluggish, the cranial wave coming from the sacrum all the way up into the, the skull. And so I'm trying to increase that cranial wave. And so it ends up trying to create like a big bath yeah. <laughs> for the brain. And so it's very, very calming to the brain. So it's huge for, um, chronic conditions. It's really great for, um, autoimmune. It's huge for a lot of trauma. Um, ranging in a huge amount of different ways and so um, but it's just it's huge and calming down the nervous system and the body in general yeah. and then um, with myofascial think of raw chicken <laughs> um, and that the skin uh, that's the fascia and so with that we have that surrounding ligaments bones tendons and there's layers and layers and layers of it it's what keeps our organs where they're supposed to be um, it surrounds all the muscles and so think of like if you have a knot quote unquote in your shoulder or something like that like you get this big bunch and so instead of going in and jabbing on that what i do is i try to butter everything up around it and so eventually it will just kind of ease on its own mm -hmm. and so it just kind of stretches and lengthens um it's a very slow my work in general is going to be much more gentle it's very slow but it's very methodical on how um, they all layer different techniques together okay. um, and then I do some acupressure as well and so in the acupressure it just kind of works in combination with the meridians and that are in the fascia with the lymph vessels the lymph vessels that are in the fascia so they all go hand in hand yeah it's really fun awesome so let's let's just start with the lymphatic system yeah. it is an important part of our immune system and it's even referred to as the body sewer system so Absolutely. can you just tell us about what that is so I kind of have two examples that I explain the lymph system with. Um, think of your internal house plumbing. So if your body is sluggish or not draining well, if your toilet it doesn't flush, if we go out and just try to clear plumbing at the street, it's not going to help the internal plumbing. And so that's where, again, like I'm very specific in layering into people's systems. Because, um, again, I don't want to just release like a, a huge water dam either because right. that's going to make the person sick like you're right. seeing too many toxins into the body and the body doesn't know how to detox it it's already overwhelmed right. so it's very slow in opening up the pathway so like think of like first we have to get the toilets to flush we have to get the sinks to drain and then after we get that then we might need to snake some pipes right. and then from that then like if we need to clear some things from the street then we can but it's layering into the system and so the lymphatics are very much that way we work in the superficial lymph 
um, first, which that's where like you may see like someone's puffy or they have that like a lot of fluid underneath their eyes. Like, yeah. That's superficial. Um, and then as we work deeper into that's when we get into like the visceral work surrounding all the organs, the brain has a ton of lymph. Um, there's a lot of really cool research seeing how that works with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's mm -hmm. and MS and like there's a lot of preventative work you can do by wow. clearing out this toxin. Yeah. So they actually say if you get lymph work regularly, you can move up to three pounds of toxic lymph out of the brain in a year um, just through manual lymphatics. So it's really, really cool of how it's huge for treating. Um, before we can ever pour nutrients in, we have to get the toxins out. Right. And it's like detoxes are great when needed and this or that, but like our body should be detoxing daily on its right. own and the lymphatic system is what does that for us. Yes. So awesome. we want it moving. <laughs> yes. Well, speaking of moving, like, can you just tell us how I talk a little bit about it, but if you're new here, I, um, there's different ways you can help your body mm -hmm. move that. So give some examples. So obviously I love for people to come see me or other massage therapists that are trained in lymphatics. Um, so manual work is one way with a practitioner. Um, it's probably gonna be like a little bit more intense method, but there's so much people can do on their own. So um, movement, our lymphatic system does not have its own pumping mechanism. So where like the heart pumps the blood, the lymph doesn't have a way to pump. Um, now, where everywhere there is, I don't know if you can see my little chart, but all these green vessels, those are all lymphatic. So anywhere there's blood, there's lymph. The vessels like kind of, they are side by side. Um, so if the blood's pumping, then that helps the lymph, but that happens through muscular movement. Yeah. So yes, exercise, but just movement, going for walks. Um, my personal favorite, because of my background, is swimming. You have the compression of the water on top of movement. That's why a lot of people pee a ton after they go swimming, because yes. um, you're getting that double whammy uh, of both pieces with the compression um, and the water. So. Um, movement is huge. You hear of rebounding, dry brushing, that's going to get a lot of the superficial lymph going. Um, there's, there's a lot of different ways and you can learn to self pump. So that mm -hmm. is something that like, I love when people come to see me, I can't get everybody in in a day. Right. Um, and so I try to really teach people like, these are different ways you can self pump. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can move fluid and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah, some really, really cool. cool ways. To yeah, do. it really is cool. And rebounding, you know, if you're, all right, I mean, I'm a, a smidge older than you, not much, but like from the eighties, basically oh, yeah. it's a mini <laughs> tramp and you can also just jump up and down. Uh, like, jumping jacks are great. Jumping or jacks are great. Jumping. Like you, don't, kids. Like, yeah, yeah. you don't need a you know uh, mini track to do it. But yeah. yes, that's awesome. So a part of my health coaching is gut gut health. That is an important part. Mainly, I mean, that's been a huge focus of my life. But so let's just talk about the connection, like the important connection of the gut and the lymphatic system. Absolutely. So like we said, the immune system is the lymphatic system. So seventy percent of your lymph is in your gut, <laughs> which is amazing. Huge, yeah. So we all hear of leaky gut. Um, the reason leaky gut happens is because those lymph vessels get damaged. Mm -hmm. So as those disintegrate, there's nothing to move the toxins out, and then that's where the walls start to separate, and then everything kind of falls to pieces. So we, the cool part, lymph nodes do not regrow. However, lymph vessels do regrow. So as we heal the gut, those lymph vessels will regrow, and then like that's what helps the body heal. Because mm -hmm. um, again, it's the immune system. Like the the lymph fluid itself, like it removes dead cells, it removes the toxins, like it does all that. But it brings in the T cells, it brings in the fighter cells, and that's what yes. helps the body fight the stuff. Yeah. The, the funguses, the bacteria, we all have it in our body, but if the immune system's working, it doesn't make us sick. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorite things that I try to tell people is like, we want to pour in the new, the nutrients and the good stuff, mm -hmm. but if our body can't get rid of the old that's already damaged it, right. it doesn't matter how much new we put in, like it can't move it out. Right. Um, because it's it's already sluggish, it's already stuck. Right. So we have to move the old out to get the nutrients in to then be able to heal. Right. That's awesome. So yeah. they go hand in hand really well. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Um, so just tell us a little bit about what someone might experience after a, a lymphatic session. Yeah. So I get really passionate in this part. <laughs> um, I again, my approach is to support the body of what it is ready for. I do not believe. Um, of coming in and pushing, 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 pushing. Now, there is times there's gonna be some detox that is not pleasant. Right. However, 
you should not be leaving a session of puking and can't function for two weeks. That is not, like, the body's not ready for yeah, that. Which I've sometimes. had that experience before. And it's, and it's <laughs> I'm not saying, fun. It's not fun. Yeah. It is, I mean, it can make you incredibly sick. You feel like that you have to flu for two weeks. Yes. Um, and so more is not always better. <laughs> right. That is my theme over and over and over. I would rather you come in and do a 30 minute session and we get the first layer moving. Let your body learn how to move that layer, then come in again, and then maybe we can do a little bit more. Yeah. So again, I layer in very carefully with my work, because yeah. I don't want people to sit, because no one can be out for two weeks with yeah. the lymphatic flu. Like, yeah. Yeah. we need to be able to function in life, and so, again, in like brain fog, like if we're stirring this huge pot of toxins, like, we don't want, again, like that water dam just to like explode, and then your body doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Um, so with my work, a lot of times in a healthy, <laughs> healthy detox looks like, um, you know, that you may have a stinky right armpit because I've worked a lot of the lymph in the arms. And so like it comes out and how any kind of detox does, it's going to come out through the skin. So sweat, saliva, you might have some bad breath. Um, you will probably urinate more than you knew you could, um, because again, it's fluid. So right. like, as we move that fluid through the system, we're pumping it all up through the VA. It goes through this really cool filtration process and then you urinate it out. Um, now it could be more, it could have a little odor. It could have a different color. Mm -hmm. Like it can come out in a lot of different ways just depending on every single person's body. Yeah. Um, and then the other way is feces. Like it can come out and I had a lady that was like, I never knew I could have so many bowels in a day in my life. Mm -hmm. And we did a very gentle approach, but like she never was sick from it. Yes. It was just the body getting rid of things. Yes. Um, so again, it looks a little different from everybody. Um, but a lot of times too, people, so those are like the physical detox, but a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, my brain is so much clearer because we've just pulled stuff out of the brain. Right. Like brain fog goes down. Um, there is a ton of really cool effects with, um, just like, they're like, my stomach feels lighter. Like I don't feel heavy all the right. time. Um, breast tenderness, I am licensed to work the breast. And so I do a ton of um, breast implant removal um, toxicity and yeah. that kind of stuff. And so, or even nursing moms that have had mastitis or just when you're about to approach your cycle and the breast can swell. And like the reason the breast is swell is it's stagnant lymph, which people don't think of. They mm -hmm. just think it's, that's the normal. Right. Yeah. If you do some really cool breast work, it's right. not sore. So oh. <laughs> I'm pregnant currently. And the first couple weeks, my breasts were a little sore. I worked on myself. I have not had tender breasts since. Awesome. But it's because I'm moving out that fluid all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of cool ways, like the body just feels like you can have actually having huge amounts of increased range of motion mm -hmm. um, because you're moving that lymph. So yeah. like you have a really hard, hard workout, like it's lactic acid. Yeah. With lymphatic work, you're moving out the lactic acid. Mm -hmm. So like people are like, oh, I recover better from workouts. Right. So like I see a lot of chronic patients, but then I also have some really incredible, amazing world-class athletes and it works both ways. Yeah. And I'm not one person that says one fit all for everything, but like the lymph system is so underrated. We all have it and we all need it to be working functionally. Yeah. So awesome. Amazing. I love this. I could talk forever. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so we are going to break this into a couple of parts. And so catch us part two next week and we'll talk about myofascial work and we'll get into cranial sacral as well. So thank you for being here today. I love talking amazing. to you. Also being a patient or a client of yours as well. Yes. So um, so thank you, and we will see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.